Good morning everybody, I hope that you are all well and enjoying the novel so far. I'm Miss Trigg and this morning I'm going to read chapter 12, what it said on the golden ticket. Charlie burst through the front door shouting, Mother! 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 Mrs Bucket was in the old grandparents' room serving them their evening soup. Mother! yelled Charlie, rushing in on them like a hurricane. Look! I've got it! Look, mother, look, the last golden ticket. It's mine. I found some money in the street and I bought two bars of chocolate. And the second one had the golden ticket. And there were crowds of people all around us wanting to see it. And the shopkeeper rescued me and I ran all the way home. And here I am. It's the fifth golden ticket, mother, and I found it. Mrs Bucket simply stood and stared while the four old grandparents who were sitting up in bed balancing bowls of soup on their laps all dropped their spoons with a clatter and froze against their pillows. For about 10 seconds there was absolute silence in the room. Nobody dared to speak or move. It was a magic moment. Then very softly Grandpa Joe said, you're pulling our legs Charlie, aren't you? You're having a little joke. I'm not, cried Charlie, rushing up to the bed and holding out the large and beautiful golden ticket for him to see. Grandpa Joe leaned forward and took a close look, his nose almost touching the ticket. The others watched him, waiting for the verdict. Then, very slowly, with a slow and marvellous grin spreading all over his face, Grandpa Joe lifted his head and looked straight at Charlie. The colour was rushing to his cheeks and his eyes were wide open, shining with joy. And in the centre of each eye, right in the centre, in the black pupil, a little spark of wild excitement was slowly dancing. Then the old man took a deep breath and suddenly, with no warning whatsoever, an explosion seemed to take place inside him. He threw up his arms and yelled, Yippee! And at the same time, his long bony body rose up out of the bed and his bowl of soup went flying into the face of Grandma Josephine. And in one fantastic leap, this old fella of 96 and a half, who hadn't been out of bed these past 20 years, jumped onto the floor and started to doing a dance of victory in his pyjamas. Yippee, he shouted. Three cheers for Charlie. Hip, hip. Hooray. At this point, the door opened and Mr Bucket walked into the room. He was cold and tired and he looked it. All day long, he had been shoveling snow in the streets. Cripes, he cried. What's going on in here? It didn't take them long to tell him what had happened. I don't believe it, he said. It's not possible. Show him the ticket, Charlie, shouted Grandpa Tut Joe, who was still dancing around the floor like a dervish in his striped pyjamas. Show your father the fifth and last golden ticket in the world. Let me see it, Charlie, Mr Bucket said, collapsing into a chair and holding out his hand. Charlie came forward with a precious document. It was a very beautiful thing, this golden ticket, having been made, so it seemed, from a sheet of pure gold hammered out almost to the thinnest of paper. On one side of it, printed by some clever method in jet black letters, was the invitation itself from Mr Wonka. Read it aloud, said Grandpa Joe, climbing back into bed again at last. Let's all hear exactly what it says. Mr Bucket held the lovely golden ticket up close to his eyes. His hands were trembling silently and he seemed to be overcome by the whole business. He took several deep breaths, then he cleared his throat, <clears> throat> and said, 
All right, I'll read it. Here we go. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr Willy Wonka. I shake you warmly by the hand. Tremendous things are in store for you. Many wonderful surprises await you. For now, I do invite you to come to my factory and be my guest for one whole day. You and all others who are lucky enough to find my golden tickets. I, Willy Wonka, will conduct you around the factory myself, showing you everything that there is to see. And afterwards... When it is time to leave, you will be escorted home by a procession of large trucks. These trucks, I can promise you, will late be loaded with enough delicious eatables to last you and your entire household for many years. If, at any time thereafter, you should run out of supplies, you only have to come back to the factory and show this golden ticket and I shall be happy to refill your cupboard with whatever you want. In this way, you'll be able to keep yourself supplied with tasty morsels for the rest of your life. But this is by no means the most exciting thing that will happen on the day of your visit. I'm preparing other surprises that are even more marvellous and more fantastic for you and for all my beloved golden ticket holders. Mystic and marvellous surprises that will entrance, delight, intrigue, astonish and perplex you beyond measure. In your wildest dreams, you could not imagine that such things could happen to you. Just wait and see. And now, here are your instructions. The day I have chosen for this visit is the day in the first day in the month of February. On this day and no other, you must come to this factory to the factory gates at ten o'clock sharp in the morning. Don't be late, and you are allowed to bring with you either one or two members of your own family to look after you and to ensure that you don't get into mischief. One more thing. Be certain to have this ticket with you. Otherwise, you will not be admitted. Signed, Willy Wonka. The first day of February, cried Mrs Bucket. But that's tomorrow. Today is the last day of January. I know it. Cripes, said Mr Bucket. I think you're right. You're just in time, <laughs> shouted Grandpa Joe. There's not a moment to lose. You must start making preparations at once. Wash your face, comb your hair, scrub your hands, brush your teeth, blow your nose, cut your nails, polish your shoes, iron your shirt and for heaven's sake get all of that mud off your pants. You must get ready my boy. You must get ready for the biggest day of your life. Now, don't overexcite yourself Grandpa, Mrs Bucket said and don't fluster poor Charlie. We must all try to keep very calm. Now, the first thing to decide is who's going to go with Charlie to the factory? I will, shouted Grandpa Joe, leaping out of bed once again. I'll take him. I'll look after him. You leave it to me. Mrs Bucket smiled at the old man and then she turned to her husband and said, How about you, dear? Don't you think you should go? Well... Mr Bucket said, pausing to think about it. Mm, no, I'm not sure that I should. But you must. There's no must about it, my dear, Mr Bucket said gently. Mind you, I'd love to go. It'll be tremendously exciting. But on the other hand, I believe the person who really dis dis deserves to go most of all is Grandpa Joe himself. He seems to know more about it than we do, provided, of course, that he's well enough. Yippee! shouted Grandpa Joe, seizing Charlie by the hands and dancing around the room. He certainly seems well enough, Mrs Bucket said, laughing. Yes, perhaps you're right after all. Perhaps Grandpa Joe should be the one to go with him. I certainly can't go myself and leave the other three old people all alone here in bed for a whole day. Hallelujah, yelled Grandpa Joe, praise the Lord. At that point, there came a loud knock on the front door. 
Mr Bucket went to open it and the next morning swarms of newspapermen and photographers were pouring into the house. They had tracked down the finder of the fifth golden ticket and now they all wanted to get the full story for the front pages of the morning papers. For several hours there was complete pandemonium in the little house and it must have been nearly midnight before Mr Bucket was able to get rid of them so that Charlie could go to bed. Well I hope you enjoyed reading hearing that chapter from me. Uh, my tasks for, me, for you to complete uh, between now and the next chapter I would like you to think of yourselves as newspaper reporters and create uh, a newspaper article uh, based on your interview with Charlie Bucket. Uh, please include lots and lots of pictures, quotes, uh, be as creative as you possibly can um, and I hope that on your return to school I'll be able to see as many of those newspaper reports as possible. Keep safe, keep well um, and I look forward to hearing and seeing from you all very soon. Take care, bye!